Hello, Mark. Thanks so much for joining me. Hey, Ernest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, happy, happy to be here. All right, let's, uh, let's kick it off. So would you like to tell me some information about your background and how IHP got started? Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I, I have a like, I'm, or I have a technical background. So uh, I started IHP basically, uh, or basically in 2016, I started uh, Digitally Induced, my company here. And um, we've been working with lots of uh, kind of projects, software projects uh, for clients uh, back then. And I always see like, I always saw like repeating problems uh, uh, happening again and again. We've been looking through like, um, like, like what, what technology can we use to, to build like um, high quality software that needs to change very often and change very fast because we always worked with like uh, startups and, and uh, they needed to like change stuff very often and adjust stuff and we always like when we were working, for example, with Node.js, we always had like a lot of quality uh, problems with, with there. And so I've been uh, looking into Haskell and saw, okay, like the potential we can um, have with Haskell by, or well, basically the language offers a way to build much more high quality applications. And then I looked at the ecosystem, but I could not really, yeah. Well, I saw, okay, like it's a great language, but this it's very hard to get into it's very hard to build like web applications with because all the existing web frameworks in the Haskell ecosystem were built for experts basically. And at that moment, I, I was still not an expert. I was just trying to get something working with Haskell. And, um, and so I kind of decided, okay, I, I will just try build my own kind of, um, uh, yeah, or just play around with it and build my own um, kind of first test web application. And initially it was just a way to um, because Haskell is going to compile language, you always have to basically make a change, uh, go to your terminal, restart the application and everything. I just built like the initial version of what later became IHP was just a um, kind of optimized dev server that then um, uh, kind of automatically, whenever you, you make a file change, it will uh, just restart the compiler and reload the application and restart everything. And then you can just feed again and uh, like direct, basically make a very fast feedback loop. And then I kind of like built everything else around that, like basically um, like database uh, stuff, a view layer and everything. And later it became um, HP. So we started using it then in like first small projects to started to, to kind of trying out. And then we could see, okay, like this works, it just works very well. Um, and then we kind of, yeah, continuously built on top of it. And in 2020, we, uh, like we always planned to eventually make it open source, but it always like was not a priority at that moment, always. And we moved it and moved it. And then in 2020, we finally, um, I think it was, uh, yeah, just after, like a little bit after COVID basically happened, um, we, 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 we started, uh, or we, we basically finally open sourced it. And that was also like, kind of a couple months process basically to go from, we have our internal repository to, uh, it will go open source. Um, yeah, also, especially since we had to write like lots of documentation, a website, um, and, uh, yeah, initially we actually, I think I uh, made the repository open source, um, in a, like a couple of weeks before we, we, we actually like launched, really launched. And then we already got like a couple of people like uh, like, oh, we got feedback from a couple of people. So I, I called a couple of friends and asked them, Hey, okay. Like, uh, what do you think? Um, uh, this is cool. Um, and got some feedback, especially on documentation and everything. And eventually we posted it on hacker news, I think. And then it just, uh, really, uh, yeah, like the hack, I think the initial hacker news post was really uh, big and got lots of upvotes and was, uh, on the front page for a while. And, uh, yeah, and since then kind of. HP was, was continuously growing since then, basically. I love it. So that's... <laughs> Thanks for sharing the background. And IHP stands for Integrated Haskell Platform. And uh, yeah. I reckon it should make it, it does make it easier for, uh, you know, for people to get started with Haskell. You mentioned that it's, you know, more reserved for experts. I mean, how do you feel that stands today? And uh, do you see, you know, more beginners uh, pick up the language now and not be afraid of it? Um, yeah, I think especially in the IT communities, we have a lot of people that are like, okay, like I want to learn, uh, well, people see like 
all the stuff with functional programming happening. And then I think, okay, like I will uh, look for Haskell to try it out because it's like, uh, like the, the, um, yeah, one of the kind of core functional only or, or, or languages that are really like in the core functional designed. And, um, then you look at Haskell and you want to play it out and, 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 and then people, when they look at like, what can it, well, most people want to do web development. It's uh, just like the most popular way to build applications or like for and, um, and then people look at, okay, I want to use Haskell. I want to do web stuff. And then they kind of look at the options and they discover ISP. And, and yeah, and if you, uh, for example, we have an ISP Slack community with over 400 people. And there are also a lot of people are just like people like just trying out beginning with Haskell. Um, and even some people in the ISP community, like for example, made a blog, how they, uh, like how they kind of learned Haskell and ISP and kind of, so that this I think we kind of, yeah, uh, really nailed like the kind of audience a little bit, um, because there are a lot of people that want to learn Haskell and then kind of need to framework to get started with, and with ISP, it's really like, you can just learn Haskell along the way, um, because like. You don't need to know anything about monads. Um, someone actually uh, to told me you are like the only Haskell framework that does not mention the word monad in its documentation. <laughs> <laughs> the advantage of IHP is actually the Haskell type system uh, in a sense. Um, it really provides a very solid kind of system to, to do that. And and then IHP has a lot of like tools to just to just make it easy to, to build something. For example, we have like a schema designer, which allows you to kind of uh, design as a day, like the database structures, but you can also do this in code or in the visual schema designer it works both ways. Um, and uh, then for example, we have like code generators, like a lot, basically a lot of this is inspired by rails, which provides great way to kind of build up a lot of these, um, yeah, like initial code snippets very quickly. And, and, uh, yeah, we've, we've like, basically when you start, you just can create uh, create a couple of tables, uh, then you can use the code, for example, a co controller code generator to generate like the controller, and then you can directly use it. Um, uh, and I think this, uh, yeah, is a very kind of frictionless experience. It makes it very fast to build stuff. And then on the view side, we also have features like um, HSX, which is like JSX on uh, on, on on React side, um, but but built for Haskell basically. So it's very similar syntax, but it just is, is like a type checked. Um, version of JSX for Haskell. Um, totally. yeah. Perfect. And the, the, the way I understand it, because I've also played with IHP and my co-founder as well, is that, I mean, it's becoming the platform, the framework for, for people in the Haskell ecosystem. Uh, how is uh, how is that adoption looking like and sort of like the ecosystem and the community, however it's organized, how did it welcome it? How does it maybe promote it or like, you know, have it within its resources? How does that play out for you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, um, I think, mm, yeah, since, basically since the beginning, we've been kind of quickly trying to build a community around IHP. Uh, so basically when we launched, initially we on, had tried to build on, there was this tool called Gitter, uh, which was like uh, an yeah, instant messaging app for developers. Uh, so that's what we initially used to build up the community, but it eventually kind of, um, yeah, like, kind of like it was not development anymore i think and then we switch over to slack and then we build a slack community the total numbers of contributors are to IHP, i think maybe around 60 or something it's, it's still a kind of a bit of a challenge to 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 uh to contribute to IHP. i think but i think it could be better for much much more people but i think it's uh, kind of a bit tricky to get everything working most people just want to build web applications basically um so yeah so you started your own company and you did projects for, for clients and through that experience came they need to, to develop something like ihp today is uh digitally induced in terms of how it's heralding the the ihp project and how maybe the whole endeavor is funded uh, or how more people are involved would you like to uh quickly talk about this um essentially building this company um yeah uh yeah um yeah, so so we are uh, like uh, seven people uh, at the moment. So it's like we're the small company, um, and the the well, in terms of 
products. I mean, we, 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 uh, after we kind of launched the open source version, of course, it was it made sense kind of to see how we can monetize it and use it kind of to grow the company as well, because I think it's like great, uh, yeah, like it has great potential and provides so much value for people. And it would be good if, if you, for example, could hire people to work on, on the IHP ecosystem and kind of build that beyond our like contributions we do already. So we tried, for example, IHP cloud, which was like the first kind of idea we had. We thought, okay, we build an, um, a hosting solution where you can just like a Heroku, but for IHP, um, which we uh, did launch and worked pretty well. Um, but we've now discontinued actually this year. Um, because there's now uh, a community alternative, basically shipnix.com, which is um, which is uh, created by some of in the IHP community, as it's now actually a little bit better than what we've done. So that's why we've we've kind of discontinued it. Um, and we've after our kind of like first ex, like exploration into hosting, we've we've decided okay, or the thing. <clears throat> The monetization of open source projects is really tough um, because you always run into different kind of uh, um, incentive problems. Um, so when you build a something like HP Cloud, um, it's it's not our incentive in a way to um, make it easy to deploy HP apps because this will destroy our kind of hosting business um, in in a way. Um, if it's too easy to deploy, you don't deploy with IHP Cloud, you just deploy on your own. And um, these kind of incentive systems are, I think, very tricky in open source business models. And it's very important to like carefully think about what incentives you kind of want to do. And <clears throat> so what we later came up with actually is we introduced IHP uh, Pro and IHP Business, which are like uh, paid versions of the IHP framework. Uh, with uh, with certain features included that are typically needed for a usage in a professional context, and um, this kind of was actually I think initially we were worried it might be very unpopular to introduce like paid plans to our MIT licensed open source framework, um, and we talked I talked to a lot of people in the IHP community and a lot of people actually told me hey okay I would actually be happy if IHP do does that because then like a lot of people rely on IHP to be continuously developed. And if you pay for it, you can be like, you have peace of mind that it's like people working on it um, versus when it's open source, like tomorrow we could just uh, like discontinue it. Basically there's no kind of obligation from us to continue uh, continuously developing it. And, uh, and I think this is, this actually shows like the power of the, like of the right incentive structures. Um, so in that case, it's actually very well aligned with what professional users want from IHP. Um, and then we introduced these plans and now we have, uh, like various kind of, um, a different kind of, uh, people using it. Like a lot of, I think we, we have a lot of people that just, um, are using IHP for personal projects or like as individuals. Um, and then we also have various like larger companies that use IHP in a professional way. And these also like then use uh, IHP business licenses, for example. Um, yeah. And then additionally, on top of that, we also offer like, yeah, like kind of support uh, in a way. Um, so it actually happens that most of the companies that use like the paid plans typically then also in some ways get in contact with us for, uh, for stuff. And then we also sometimes get to work with them like, like in a, con like as a consultancy, basically provide services and our experience kind of, um, yeah. Thank, th th thank you so much for highlighting this. Uh, you know, it is very tricky water. It's one of the most challenging things to figure out monetization. And, and you said you need to align the incentives properly. And, and you mentioned the example of the, the, the cloud version where the community went ahead and just, you know, improved that and as a, as a free, uh, as, as a free offering. And so, you know, it sounds like you have together with the, with the business license, you have arrived at a situation where support seems to be uh, the most one of the most viable ways to, to generate uh, revenue for the project. So could you very quickly uh, touch upon what that looks like in terms of like workflow, uh, the support and how you service this very surface level cause you might get into, yeah. Um, yeah, actually support offsets. It's like, it's our own kind of, 
uh, incentive problems, actually, if you think about it. Um, and that's why we initially did not want to offer support in any way uh, because, because of this. Um, the problem is, if you think only about offering support, um, basically, if you make a great, simple to use web framework, um, there should not be the need for support. Like you should just go to the documentation and, and figure it out and uh, don't need any kind of, yeah, experts to, to help you with. Um, because the problem is if you then do, do it that way, um, you, you are like incentivized basically as a company to make the framework more complex. Uh, so you need more support as a professional user of IHP. And we don't want that. We want like, we want the company that didn't use to be incentivized to actually keep the framework simple. Um, and support does not really, uh, does that, but, it, but it just turns out that, um, even if we make it simple to use, there's still a lot of, um, companies that sometimes have questions and need, need someone who's just more experienced or has, has done, has done it before, basically some of that stuff's just not documented because it's like so much like, um, tactical knowledge of how to deploy, for example, IHP applications in AWS or something, which we've done like uh, uh, a lot of times already and already knows like ins and out of these kind of setups. Um, yeah. And how that typically works is I think it, um, yeah, it, um, it, it depends. Like um, for example, with some people, for example, yesterday I like a uh, call with someone where we had like half a day session providing consultancy um, but that's someone who's also very active in the IHP community already and uh, also does this on like IHP projects with clients. Um, and that's uh, like, then how it happens basically just like, uh, for example, we have like a shared a Slack channel basically or sh shared Slack channels where we, uh, where we then like just can like schedule a session basically to, to, to do a support session. And then after, after that, yeah, we just, uh, Send an invoice to be. Um, and with, with other companies, it sometimes happens via email. So they just reach out via email um, to us and then we just figure something out. Um, yeah, and it's always very individual. So there's not, um, I think, think it's actually good if you have like a standard package for this, but in our case, it's still uh, very, always very individual. So we always like, make individual kind of plans what what works best for each case um so we we still have basically outside clients it's actually very good for us to do that because um it's not good actually coming back to the incentives again if we if we would just uh like a basic by implementing software in ihp we see what the problems are what the front needs to be better at and everything and um so and and, and, and instead of like inventing like artificial problems to add stuff to the framework to actually see how it performs basically in real world for like applications and um yeah and and also we can kind of leverage all the ihp community for example for hiring then and mm -hmm. and um i think that that kind of works uh works well um for us um yeah so 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 we also plan to like, continue to do that because just like a good way for us to kind of yeah, use use what we built and see how it performs in the world. And on on the funding side, yeah, we are still bootstrapped. So there, there's there have been like the opportunity that we've had, uh, like various investors kind of um, along the way that were interested in in uh, meeting with us and everything. Um, but I think for especially for framework, it's it's a tough um, thing because the revenue streams are always like a mix of um, kind of like product revenue, service revenue, support revenue. And, and um, I think these kind of uh, like this kind of business would not really work well with a VC backed kind of way. Um, yeah. I, in this, <clears throat> uh, for example, there, there's been framework companies kind of in, in the JavaScript ecosystem that have raised uh, VC. And I think uh, they've been, for example, acquired now. Uh, and um, I think um, that's a, like a valid strategy and that can be done. Um, but especially in the Haskell ecosystem, it's, it's uh, 
it's tough. So you need to have very technical uh, VCs. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> so uh, we've been also doing uh, like a revamp of IHP called a thin backend, um, which is like a JavaScript version of IHP basically, just to explore how to, how it would look. Basically, offering one part of the IHP framework, which is IHP data so as a kind of standalone service, and they've also got lots uh lots of investors interested um and i think this is way more scalable as a business than like the, because then you could have like just uh more product revenue there that would would for example also work as a way to kind of yeah to get uh, to get yeah vc um into the business but at the moment we are yeah we are uh bootstrapped Congratulations and uh, thanks for sharing that. And that's that's very interesting. So, is there an up and coming milestone, um, you know, or something that you might like to to tease about when it comes to what's what's coming on the roadmap for IHP? Uh, so, we just released the version one point oh, uh, uh, yeah, and so um, so it's actually at the moment we are just uh, kind of improving. I think a lot of like stuff. Like we actually did like the first bug fix release after the one point oh already and i think at the moment we are um yeah we are just uh kind of fixing more, more stuff and seeing um, just improving like the general of the framework um and working on that a lot and also like oh, we have lots of projects at the moment we are working with ihp so there's there's actually no at the moment there's no major um new release uh i think on on the line yet um yeah do you do you get to travel at all to to go to conferences or mingle with people in the ecosystem, or is it mostly you know out of your office and whatnot? Um, we actually did in the uh, in in like during COVID, we were like on a Haskell conference, and we did like the but it was like completely remote because it was like COVID. Uh, and uh, I think this was like the first thing. And now there's an actually, um, uh, I was on the Haskell podcast uh, in December. And they also ask, okay, uh, like outside of the outside of the podcast, we talk and and um, uh, like uh, it's suggested that we should come more to events because we have not been, uh, yeah, to, to, I think in person to any major conference in the Haskell co community. Um, there's actually been a couple of conferences I think where other people talked about IHP um, in in the past, but uh, yeah, so for us it's. Uh, yeah, it might be uh might Maybe be organize might your be time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we we've been thinking about that doing an IHP conference in the past, actually. Uh that's been something we've discussed. Uh um yeah. So we we actually did also during COVID, we did uh, IHP meetups online basically. Uh yeah. Um and um and this was also super interesting because we did it like the first one, like I think three months after IHP launch or something. And yeah, and we had like lots of people, like we had like, I think 50 people in our first meetup or something over Zoom. And um, it was super interesting. We always had like two speakers from the IHP community share something they've been working on, like projects they've done with IHP uh, or problems that they kind of encountered during, during, uh, during using IHP. Um, and that was always super interesting. I think it's what is a good way to kind of uh, like get the community together and uh, yeah. Um, I love it. I love it. That yeah. sounds like something you would recommend to other founders and projects to try. Yeah, yeah. I, I would definitely, yeah, recommend that. Uh, it's 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 highly, uh, it's a, like a highly good thing. I mean, it's a bit of work to actually prepare, so it takes a bit of time to kind of, kind of get get like people's like find like some speakers and maybe, um, also like yeah, just kind of, um, have presentation. And then also we had always like someone moderating the event, so it always took a bit of preparation. Um, um, but yeah, it was always worth it. I think it was always super fun also to see what everybody's up to. Kind of um, yeah, it's like a different vibe when 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 it's like then just like having everybody on Slack when you see people actually in person and uh, you know uh, talk can personally talk to people and yeah, it was a great great way. And yeah, and it actually led, for example. Some of the people I like, we met then in the IHP community in our events. Uh, for example, when I was traveling to the US last year to uh, to uh, like to San Francisco, and then I visited some of the people that were using IHP in the US. It was really great, and we had lots of fun basically. And um, 
um, yeah, and it's it's great when you kind of yeah like know the community and then you can just meet people. Um, yeah, absolutely. It sounds like a, those are the highlights of, of the whole experience. And you know, I mean, there's 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 a lot of work and responsibility on your shoulders. So as a founder, as a as a person, how do you go about managing it all? And you know, you're a young guy. I mean, how does it influence things? Do you have any any mechanism or sort of like mindset that helps you? Uh, navigate this i know it's a, it's a hard question maybe to unravel but okay. yeah uh, it's a i think uh i think uh it's just um there's always so many problems <laughs> you know that it's like um it's uh, just like you just solve them step by step i think um um yeah i don't think it's just uh Yeah, I think it's it's tricky um, when 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 it's uh, when you have very stressful times. I think, but there's no way kind of to yeah, just I, like I think you just have to go through it basically. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's, uh, um, there's no no silver bullet. I think to to fix this. Um, yeah, I think may I think maybe the answer is you just. Um, I think the the um, the 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 basically the amount of of problems you can handle it just you, you just get better at handling pro certain problems i think then you can just take more more problems basically <laughs> um <That's> encouraging <laughs> yeah in terms of maybe from, from all your experience maybe some piece of advice that you could highlight or a mistake to avoid for like uh new founders and builders hmm. um I think I would think much more about the monetization from uh, upfront. I think we, we took a lot of time to figure out how to monetize and uh, think so. Like even now, I think monetization strategies for HP are not not uh, not perfect. And I think it would like we could save a lot of time. So basically, just iterated for every way to monetize the work from it and figure out what 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 are the problems with each model and um it would would go faster if if, if uh we would not have to iterate through everything <laughs> then this, yeah to kind of see all the problems yeah and someone and, starting uh, today i mean like can you kind of like give them do we have a verdict here in terms of if you started again today how you would start with approaching monetization i know we talk about this a lot but it's the biggest yeah, yeah. i think what was really helpful was looking at a different companies in um in other kind of uh like for example i looked at various um uh like in, in for example in java world there are various like commercial firmware companies and i just looked at them and i tried to understand how the business models are work and how how they do stuff um because there are some of them are really large companies sometimes and um it's a good way to kind of because there you can actually see what worked in the past at least or what what works like currently maybe, um, and I think it uh, it ha helps to because a lot of these companies probably already tried out all the various ways you can kind of build a business around uh, work from work, and and they kind of ended up with what works, and then you can just kind of take a lot of the learnings there. And what I also found helpful was like talk to some of the people, so I talk actually got to talk to some of the. Um, Kind of founders of these companies um and that was also good to hear and uh one of them actually told me okay um it's um um yeah he basically was surprised that there's that, that you can do commercial aspect for work at all <laughs> um but there was good 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 insights basically i got from that so basically just maybe con yeah just look at what other companies are doing in other spaces maybe and also talk to the people i think that's are that these are things you can do that can save a lot of time and i would I would do these steps basically for what to do a framework company again um yeah absolutely absolutely and and hopefully you know people reach the point where they have a sustainable business you know the revenue helps with covering everyone's salaries and moving forward so i mean that's you know Huge congratulations for that again. It's a, it's a point that everyone is trying to, to reach. 
Um, the rest of the year, like, do you have something? I know you have 1.0 that came out recently. Um, like, what's on, on your mind? The monetization is obviously like always there, but is there something else you might like to share or, you know, maybe to put something out there so that someone listening to this, you know, might reach out to you and have a relevant conversation? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think if you're around, basically, somewhere here in Germany, not time is fine. Uh, we are hiring. <laughs> Uh, that would be uh, that we, so that's what I'm at the moment working on so we have a, like a lot of stuff going on at the moment and we just need a little bit more people I think uh, to to kind of uh, yeah to, to, to get everything done and um, <laughs> so that's so that's what I'm mostly focused on at the moment like just getting uh, getting everything run smoothly um, here and yeah and uh, yeah on the on the framework side there's a lot of stuff that's uh, we still want to do this year, like, um, like there's very big features we want to uh, want to kind of add. Like, uh, we, we've already like shipped like first part of like internationalization of IHP. So we've done already like multi language IHP apps in the past. We just need to kind of move it into the framework more because that's like a lot of people also need that. Yeah, and we've been just like working also on discontinuing IHP Cloud. So that took also a bit of time at the moment. Um, just moving everything from IHP Cloud to Shipnix. Like we've been also ourselves users of IHP Cloud. Now we've just been grading stuff um, over to Shipnix. Um, and yeah. That's, uh, so yeah. That's that's great. And you know, we have a few minutes left. Just quickly want to touch on the on the hiring aspect, which is happening right now for you. The previous team members, so you're like six, seven people. How did the hiring process look like? And today, what is it looking like? Uh, do you actually ask people to contribute first? Yeah, so in the in the past, we actually hired people that have been contributors, uh, uh, also remotely. So that worked uh, worked uh, well, I think, for us. Um, um, and uh, I mean, at the moment, we I prefer to hire like people in person again. Uh, I think it's, uh, but, uh, it's probably a bit unpopular at the moment, but... <laughs> um, um, and, and, and so at the moment, um, we rather look at finding people around like here, but it's actually not, uh, well, it's actually very good with IHP because, um, for example, there are people, um, that, that, that they maybe learn Haskell or something at the, com at the, at the, uh, university and then want to, when they go to like, when they make the jump from university to work, um, they want to also continue to use Haskell. And then like, we are one of the Haskell companies uh, around here basically and it's very easy to kind of get to know about us because uh, of IHP and so I think that kind of helps us uh, recruit great people um, yeah because like we, we have a lot of people that really are very talented that apply kind of uh, just because they want to use Haskell and I think we've kind of um, yeah through IHP we just get a lot of people that want to work with us on the framework and to, like also want to Want to make Haskell more successful language in general, like follow the, I think our kind of ways of doing things and our kind of, uh, yeah, ways. And <clears throat> what also has been helpful is like then a lot of pe people already are very productive from the, from the goal, right? So, so they can just like get started with, with, with what we do and don't need that much onboarding kind of I think That's also helpful. Uh, absolutely. And as a, as a last note, because, you know, people in university, a lot of people pick up functional programming then, same with my co-founder. So have you yeah. so far made an orchestrated effort to get the word out of universities? And if not, is this something that you would like to do uh, soon? Information sessions, presentations, whatever it could be, universities. Do you think it's a good channel for you and for other people? Uh, uh I think we've th thought about this in the past, but it's actually not a like not a, mm -hmm. not been a problem yet. I think the, the interesting thing is like people just kind of find us. Um, I think we uh, just just if you look at like if you if you look for um, people, like Haskell companies around here, basically you will find us. <laughs> basically, I think it is, or at least the right people find us. So I think that yeah. works well, but. But if we, I think if we, if we need to, eventually we might try it out, yeah, to to do that as well. 
we shall see. But you know, it is the internet after all, and it's a, it's, it's tight knit community. So you know, people discover you on their own. So that's great. Here. So you know, one minute to go. Maybe a, a final remark you might like to share people, and maybe prompt them to go check out IHP. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think. Um, yeah. If you if you are uh, looking into Haskell, basically try out IHP. I think it's uh, one of the best ways to get started with Haskell, and one of the kind of uh, most reliable ways to build web applications. So it's definitely something uh, I uh, I would recommend everybody to check out and give it a try and uh, build great stuff with HP. Mark, thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope we do this again. Yeah, uh, thanks. Really appreciate it.